grace and shame. And asking God to open up the floodgates of heaven. Well, he's going to do that regardless if we want to do it or not. He's going to do that. I thank God for being here today. It is one thing about serving God. You have to have a made up mind. To serve God. Amen. I'm talking about real serving God. I'm not talking about church. Right now. I'm talking about really serving God. Serving God to a place where there's nothing before Him or no one before Him. It's God first and everything else. I'm talking about a heaven type of salvation. Why he had living on earth. Say it. Say it. It means something. I know as each generation goes by, there are new things that come. But I know that my God and your God stands the same. Even though we fluctuate as people, we see and do different things in the church, God yet still remains the same. He's not changing. He's not changing. God set the standard and the standard's going to stay the same. And the thing about it is he gave us the Holy Bible to see the standard so that we can live the standard. I don't know about you today, but I'm going to live that standard because I know that heaven is real. And I know there's a counterpart called a lake of fire. And I believe and I know that's real too. And I know that this is time that we're going to eventually fade to what's called eternity. Everlasting life. We don't get to die. This soul that we have that God breathed in us, or oh, it stays alive, it doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't go anywhere. The body's going to go back to the dust of the ground. The spirit's going to go back to the Lord. But the soul is in a place where it can either go to heaven and dwell in the presence of the Lord or end up in the lake of fire absent from the presence of the Lord. It's not annihilated. It's going to feel. It's going to feel. Yeah, it will. So while we're here, we have to make up our mind the most serious decision we've ever made in our lives. Not only accepting God, but how we're going to serve God. Thank God we can accept Him by saying, Lord, come in yeah. and save me. But once He comes in and saves us, He has a criteria that we have to live by. There's a certain standard that we have to live by. That's why you come to church. To hear about God's standard. To hear from the preacher, to hear the word that your faith would increase on every subject that the enemy is trying to make your faith decrease about. Yeah, yeah he's a robber, he's a stealer, he's a liar, all of those things. He's a deceiver. But God's truth will always override a lie. Yeah. God's truth will always find out deception. God's truth will keep us until he comes back. Amen. Can you turn your Bibles this morning to 2 Corinthians? And we're going to ask you to look at the 6th chapter. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. As we turn, Lord, we ask you to anoint our ears to hear, our hearts to receive the Heavenly Father, our minds to retain, and our bodies to respond. In Jesus' name, amen. When you get to 2 Corinthians chapter 6, I want to talk this morning about being sanctified. It's serious to me 
brothers and sisters, being sanctified, being sanctified, being set apart, being set apart for God's use. To live like God, talk like God, respond like God. Sanctified. Not of the world, but of the kingdom of God. The world has certain rules and regulations, just as the kingdom of God has certain rules and regulations. It's being up to us to find out the separation of the two. Because believe me, there is a separation of the two. What goes in the world doesn't go in the kingdom of God. Amen. Don't do it. There's a separation. There's a division. There's a dividing line. Here in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, I want to read from verse 14 through the end of that chapter. And just one verse in chapter 7. So find in your Bible in 2 Corinthians 6 in verse 14. The word of the Lord says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? In verse 14, the writer says, you know that there's opposites right now. There's dividing lines right now. Somebody hear me today this morning. You heard that there's a kingdom of the world and there's a kingdom of God. It's a division. And the writer here, the Apostle Paul, says that there's opposites of things that should not be together. First, he said, don't be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. We understand why? Because one is going to pull the other. Either that unbeliever will pull you out of salvation, or you as a believer will pull that unbeliever into salvation. But there's going to be a tug of war going on. Unless God sent the believer into the place of the unbeliever, you go in there with a question. But if God sends you in there, you go in there with an assignment. Don't get me wrong. The only way that unbelievers are going to come into the house of God, some believers are going to have to have communion with them. But this is what Paul is saying. We don't have a commonality to be running together. We're not buddies. We're not friends. You do opposite of what I do. And let me tell you this. If you're really saved, unbelievers don't want you around them anyway. Because you're going to mess up their thing. They can't talk like they won't, drink like they won't, swear like they won't, do what they do. You're going to mess them up if you're really saved. And if you're saved, you ain't going to want to be around that anyway. Amen. Because you graduated that. Yeah. Not that you're better than them, it's just you don't do that no more. Amen. So the opposite is that. But for Paul to have to write it, evidently, somebody was doing some mixing. And it don't work like that. Jesus came to make a division between the world and the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Verse 15. And what concord has Christ been with me out? That's the devil. Or what part has he that believeth with the infidel? Infidel. That's an unbeliever. Don't believe in God. 17. Here's the instruction that God gave his people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separated, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. 18. And I will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons 
and daughters, said the Lord Almighty. Yes. See, Paul didn't say that. God said that. Yes. See, Paul had some liberty because he had spiritual apostleship wisdom. But Paul said, this didn't come from me. This is a commandment from the Lord Almighty. That if you're going to call yourself saved, born again, a Christian, you got to come out from among them. Amen. Well, Jesus, my God, my God. Here, one more verse. Chapter 7, in verse 1. It says, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfect in holiness in the fear of God. Somebody say amen. Amen. See, Paul said that there's a time when God expects us to do something. You are saved by grace and grace alone. We didn't have anything to do with being saved in a way of works. We ask God, He does it all by Himself. But then after you have put on the full armor of God, as we preached on last Sunday, now that you have that armor on, you have to do something. Faith without works is dead. You had the saving faith. Now you've been saved. God has dressed you with the full armor of God to resist and to fight in this battle with the word of God. So now God has to teach his children about a term called sanctify. Come on out from among them and be ye separated, saith the Lord Almighty. He said, then you will show that you are my sons and my daughters. You have crossed over from an old place. And thank God you moved into a new place. I thank God for that. Amen. I said, I thank God for that. Amen. I read in the Bible in Titus, the second chapter, 11, 12, and 13, where Paul wrote this to Titus. He said, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men. Thank God he sent Jesus that we can be saved. Yes. He said, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Yes. We can do it right now. Uh -huh. We understand this, brothers and sisters, that we don't get right when we go to heaven. We have to be right before we go to heaven. We don't get clean once we go to heaven. We get clean before we go to heaven. Yeah. Am I by myself today? Am I by myself today? Somebody talk to me. Right. Come on, y'all come in the house and talk to me. Talk to me this year. You know it, right? This is our opportunity yeah. to show God Almighty that I am willing to live clean. Amen. So it don't be no trouble at the gate. I can hear those words, well done. Thy good and thy faithful servant. Yeah. Enter on into the joy of the Lord. Yeah. Do you want to hear that? Yeah. I said, do you want to hear that? Yeah, yeah well, we got some work to do. Yeah. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. We've got to live clean and only and sanctified. Yes, we do. Right. In order to see God in peace. Uh -huh. I said, clean. Yeah. No spot, no wrinkle. Yeah. Holy. Yeah. Taking on all the attributes of our heavenly Father. Yes. My God, my God. Hallelujah. We all like the challenge at one time or another. It brought out the best of you. A challenge. God has challenged us to live holy. Yes. Yes. Big example for me. 
deliverance. Keep my commandments and stand up for righteousness. Yes. Yes. The reason that Timothy and Titus were told by Paul that tell the people they can live clean. Why? He said, because we're looking for that blessed hope and the glory, a glorious appearing of the great God in our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. That's why we live clean. Yes. That's why we live holy. Uh -huh. Because we do know and we do believe he's coming back again. Amen. Our living is not in vain. Yeah. Our coming is not in vain. Yeah. There's a purpose between every, behind everything that we're doing. Yeah. God is real. Jesus is real. Yeah. Heaven is real. Yeah. Hell is real. Yeah. And we got to serve God Amen. so we can go to heaven. Amen. God is holy. Yeah. God is clean. Yeah. God is just.
Because Peter had a situation that didn't know what was going on. Satan, the devil himself, went to heaven and requested to sift Peter as wheat. Yes, he did. But Jesus said, I know everything. Amen. But Peter, I prayed for you. Yeah. That Satan don't pull you down with his devices. No. I thank God that Jesus is still praying for us. Amen. I said, I thank God that he's still praying for us. <laughs> Sometimes we already crown him King of Kings. And Lord of Lords, we just rested a little bit. He's our high priest. Yeah. And he's praying day and night. Yeah. I thank God he's still on the mercy seat. Because yeah. some of us need grace. And some of us show me mercy. Yeah. Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. If he would move, we'd fly. If he'd move, we'd fall. If he'd move, we'd be exposed. But I thank God he's not King of Kings yet and not Lord of Lords. But Jesus said, I pray for them that you keep them from the evil. Then he said this, they are not of the world. Yeah. And he repeated even as I am not of the world. And he prays that, Father, sanctify them through thy truth. Well, where is the truth? Jesus said, thy word is true. Yeah. It's in the book. Yeah, Everything we need to know is in the book. Yeah, if the Bible says do it, do it. Amen. Yeah. Ah. God uses preachers to proclaim and explain the book. But I tell you what, you get this once a week for two hours, but you got the rest of the week for 24 hours. You got to know this book because I'm not always going to be preaching this book to you. You got to live it Monday through Saturday before you get back here on Sunday. You got to And that's your responsibility. Because Monday through Saturday, I'm in the book. I don't have no special cause. Once you preach, you can go home and sit down and twiddle your thumbs and put your feet up and whistle Dixie. The devil want to kill me too. Just like he want to kill you. We got to know this Bible. That's why the Bible says, study it to show thyself approved unto God. Not one another, unto God. I'm going to come around the corner in a minute. I want to visit your address. First John and two. The right and wrong. Love not the world. Real point. Neither the things that are in the world. Said, don't love that stuff out there. Don't you do it. That's 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17. He said, if any man love the world, he said, the love of the Father is not even in him. He said, all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Then he said, it's not of the Father, but it's of the world. Yeah. Then he said this, the world passes away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Amen. Do you realize right now you are fighting for your eternal soul and I am fighting for my eternal soul? I don't want to do this in this heaven. Yeah. I want to go to heaven. Amen. I believe in this more and more and more and more and more as I grow in God. That this thing has never been anything to play with, but I understand this much. On my chronological age, I get the fifties. Hey, I don't know if I'm gonna get fifty-three more. I'm closer chronologically to leaving here than staying here. I'm not stupid, and I'm fighting for my soul. Yeah. I hope you hear me today. Yeah. Fight for your soul. Yeah. There's been younger people in fifty-three that's left here. Yeah. They ain't done fighting. Their soul is being judged. But when you take the calculator out, I don't have much more time here because time moves fast. It seems like we were just here last Sunday doing the same thing. And we're here this Sunday doing it again. Time is moving by. God said, no, 
the visitation of the time. God is visiting someone's heart and someone's ears right now. Oh, yes, he is. I'm still coming to your address. I'm visiting before I leave this pulpit today. I'm coming to your address. John 17, Jesus prayed again. He said, as thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. Talking about his apostles. For their sakes, I sanctify myself. I do that first. That they also may be sanctified through my truth. Neither pray I for those alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. That's us. What these apostles wrote and how they live, we believe that's why we accept Jesus Christ. The only way that we can accept him is through the cross. That's the only way we can come to Christ is through the cross. That cross represents something. Jesus died on that cross. He bled on that cross. He was broken on that cross. He carried sin on that cross. But he said, I'm going to let you cross over. That you don't have to Go back and be held back anymore. Yes. I'm still coming to visit. Paul said, I made the crossover. Yes. He said it in the book of Galatians, the sixth chapter. He said, God forbid that I see glory except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, by this cross, whom the world is crucified unto me, and I am crucified unto you. Paul said that there's a separation. There's a crossover. Brothers and sisters, I'm not just preaching to all souls. I'm preaching to every soul. If we really want to see Jesus, we're going to have to be sanctified. I said I'm coming to visit Sanctified in the spirit, the soul, and this fleshly body. Sanctified in the body of Christ. I'm not saying this in this church. There are so many that say that they're saved, but they ain't a bit sanctified. And God said, You. Clean yourself up. What are worldly things that should not be in the house of God or in the children of God? The easy things to pick on is drinking alcohol. Alcohol is a God in itself. Why do you think the states are called spirits? Tobacco. Skull and crossbones on it will tell you you can die of heart disease. Why are the saints of God still smoking? You're not sanctified. You're not. Fornication. Having sex with somebody that's not legal to your wife or your husband. You are not sanctified. I'm not. I didn't say the Bible said I can pick it up and go get it. That's dealing with the mind. See, the world said it's all right. David named the child for you to do it. It's called happy hour. And drinks are what? Half price at happy hour. They go get happy with drink, look at somebody that's not their wife or their husband, go have sex and fornicate. You see how one thing opens up the door after the other? Then when they get done having sex, they light up a cigarette to cool down. <laughs> I ain't always been saved. I was in the world. I'm talking to us this morning. You know why I'm talking to us this morning? Because God knew just who we were and who would be in the church. And he said, I do not send my word out and let it return unto me void. Amen. So what's coming out of my mouth? It ain't just no wasted word. You can't just sit back and say, oh, that ain't me today. 
there's somebody up in this church. Woo, what's funny and sad about it? Ain't a whole lot of people up in here today. So you can't hide. I'm going to preach anyway. I said, I'm going to preach anyway. Now, we had last week's gathering. You can hide a little bit. But I can look everybody in the eye and say, God is speaking to somebody. It is not everybody. It's one somebody. He said, you got to sanctify yourself if you're going to be called by my name. Put away those worldly devices. There's been a change now in you. You're calling me your God, I'm calling you my son. You're calling me your God, I'm calling you my daughter. But you got to represent me. How can somebody that's still doing worldly things go tell somebody about Jesus and you're doing the same thing they're doing? They're going to say, if you can't change, what do you think I'm going to do? And you'll be going to church. That's right. You mean your God ain't popping up the stuff you've been doing what we do it? You might as well come on back over here and quit. Quit that God. Quit that church. It ain't doing you no good. Thank you, Jesus. I said at the beginning of the year, pastoral preaching was going to come from this church. This is pastoral here. If we're going to live for God, we got to do it right. Amen. That mind has to be sanctified. Yes. See, because the mind is the first place that the devil will attack to tell your soul and your body to react. If he can plant a thought and we entertain that thought, yes. it'll get down in our emotional place. Right. Then our body's going to respond. I'm telling you right now, if we went around to a lot of churches and put Marvin Gaye on, let's get it on. You know how many unwed children are on this earth because of that worldly song? Somebody say, well, <laughs> yeah, 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 that right there the thought process of it. Because it leaps in you. All the devil know what you like. And he know what I like too. That's why we got to be sanctified. Sanctified. There are certain triggers that he'll use to wake up our soul. And it'll start rumbling. And it'll start lusting. And it'll start desiring. And before you know it, if you don't fight, for your soul, you're going to do it in your body. Right. The battlefield of the mind. I know a lot of times we preach about sanctified is taking your body out of a situation. You can take your body out of a situation, be in a room full of Holy Ghost filled people, got the filthiest mind in the church. That's why Jesus said, you keep looking at it, you might as well slip with it. You keep looking at it, you might as well have slept with it. Because in heaven, I know your thoughts. You may be able to blank your face out on earth and play it off, but in heaven, you're doing it in my sight. Yes. yes. Sanctify the mind. Now let me go here, and then I'm done visiting your address. For those that are sitting here and saying, Pastor, I've graduated all that. I moved on, and I was glad I was here, and the sermon was good, but it didn't necessarily hit me today. I'm done with all that stuff. I'm clean, but where is your faith at in certain situations? Yeah. Mm hmm mm hmm Where is your faith and your belief on certain situations? Because you, too, that are so sanctified, me, too, that are so sanctified, sometimes can get into a place where we start to doubt and wonder if God is going to do it. Oh, y'all don't want to talk to me. Y'all want to talk to me this morning. Y'all talk to myself. Yes, sometimes when the weight and the pressures of this world get on me, I'm saying, Lord, are you going to do it? Will you do it? What is that? That's an open door to deteriorate my faith. 
since I'm going to carry it, I'll keep it, all right? Because I know there's not none of you, none of you out here to go through that. Thank you, brother. Be honest today. Thank you, brother. Say I'm guilty of it. I can go there. That right there is an impulse for the strongest saint to start to doubt God. And Sister Donna, the first lady, was reading it the other day. Anything that lacks faith is sin. Hey, anybody? Anything that's not of faith is sin. So you can be the strongest, most courageous, strongest Christian on earth. But if you get hit with something, Satan is trying to bring down your faith that you will sin. Amen. He know the word. He know the word. Yes, he does. So that's what I'm saying. This sermon here today has to do with the entry level one trying to take care of strongholds. Uh -huh. But it also is going to hit those on the feet that's been serving God strongly. He's still after you too. Yes, he is. Let me say this. If he would try Jesus, come on now. Try Jesus at his faith. I know you're hungry, you're tired, and it seems like God's forgot you. Go on and jump off the roof and kill yourself. Go on, Jesus. Jesus said, Thou shalt not tempt me. He used the word. So, uh, well, hey, what about all of these things out here that I have? Would you want to be ruled over them? Just bow down to me a little bit, and I'll put you in position. No. You should serve the Lord by God and only Him. Yeah. That's it. So whether you're here today and you're working with entry level sanctification, it's just as important if you're here today and you're built up on the highest mountain. We have to guard ourselves in being sanctified. Yeah. I understand this. That young Christians when they first get saved, they still have things in their life that they have to conquer because they have to learn knowledge. Understand that. When I first got saved, maybe a month into salvation, I was still drinking alcohol. But I went to war. God said, I saved you. Now you go to battle. And every time I took that beer, I said, you are my God. And he broke my heart and said what he was. That I'm not supposed to do. I said, you are my God, but I'm going to control you as you control me. And there's going to come a time when I never drink you again. And I drank it. I ain't lying. I used to smoke seven dollar cigars. That's about that long for me. It's about that fat. Tobacco, I like the way it felt. I said, you are my God. I'm going to quit lighting you up one day. Not today. And I live. But then I kept saying that. And I was reminded that God said, there should be no other gods before me. And I said, Lord, you've got to help me break this thing that's been so strong. See, he loved me through. You understand what I'm saying? He loved me through. But he also put requirement on me to break, break free of it. So I've given you all the power, but you have to believe it in your mind. Amen. That you don't need to drink anymore. You don't need to smoke no more. Now, when I first got saved, some things just dropped. Music, booby booty boop, all that's gone. Two earrings I had in my ears, took them off, they're gone. The weed, gone. The cocaine, gone. Didn't have no problem with that. But that beer, and them took them down on the new stogies. They stayed a while. But don't you know, one day, when I reached for that can, God said, You deliver, son. You beat this. You don't need it no more. And I didn't take that on the can and give it to somebody so they get found. I poured it down. It was done. I had that humidor cigars. I didn't give them to somebody. Crush them up, throw them away. Haven't had to do it no more. That's a stronghold. Yeah. I don't know if I'm preaching and teaching or talking. Whatever I'm doing, I hope I'm doing something Amen. to help somebody. Yeah. But a stronghold. There wasn't no way I could go pray with somebody and have beer on my breath. Right. Wasn't no way I could go in a room full of saints in the hospital, smelling like a cigar factory. Well, no way. They weren't going to receive me. I wasn't sanctified. Thank God I was saved, but I wasn't sanctified.
brothers and sisters in this church, if you find yourself not truly sanctified, let me put a godly fear in you. I would not want to take that to Jesus on my last breath. Because when we hear the word, we are accountable for the word. And when we hear the word, God is watching to see if we receive the word. So if you were here today and you got some things that you still got to work out, let God see you doing it. Don't just go back and do the same old thing with no effort. I told you every time I drank that beer, I said, I don't want you no more. And it got stronger and stronger and stronger before I knew it was done. God was tracking that in heaven. He said, son, you're doing it. Son, you're doing it. You're getting my power now. You're understanding who I am. You're coming on out from among them, and you're being separated. Hallelujah. It was embarrassing to go to the store after I said I'm saved, and people started to hear it, and I go open up the thing and get a six pack. I felt that. And there's some that's in here right now. Every time you do something, you know you're not supposed to do it. You feel it. But there's something that still pulls you to do it. But there's also a still small voice that's saying, you don't have to do it. You don't have to think that way. You don't have to speak that way. You don't have to respond that way. That's the Holy Spirit speaking in our ears. And he said, come out from among that, among them, and be separated and trust me. As I said, somebody within this group is you. It's me. He's speaking to. Yeah, he is. Can't deny it. Amen. This ain't a group meeting. This is church. This is church. And the Holy Ghost is in here. He's teaching and preaching. He's speaking to somebody. Yeah. And he's expecting somebody to say, Lord, help me yeah. in this battle. And you know what? Today, you don't have to put yourself out there as what your battle is. I put mine out there because I'm a pastor. I always be willing to lead. I always be willing to lead. I'm not ashamed to tell you what I used to do because I don't do it no more. Amen. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not afraid of that at all. I used to do that. But God is speaking to somebody this morning. In the same way that He helped me to sanctify. Spirit, soul, and body. But what's sanctifying the soul, Pastor? Anger, frustration, mad. I'm not talking about an unrighteous anger. I'm not talking about you can't get upset. You would be human. I'm talking about when it cross over. Remember, everything I'm dealing with is an impulse that can take you into sin. Do I still get angry? Yeah, I still get angry. Glad I can't really get mad. Yeah, I can still get mad. But I don't follow the impulse. You see that? Do people do things to me that make me want to fuss at them or holler? Yes, they do. We're human, but we don't follow the impulse. But that's that soul being sanctified. That's that soul being angry. You don't go there no more. Because you have your emotions in this right place. You don't follow the impulse. And of course, these bodies, these bodies, they are elements and kindred to the dust of the earth. I'm going to say this and I'm done. I promise we're done today. These bodies were brought out of the earth. The same earth that you dig down into and you get what's called iron ore. The same earth that you dig down into and you get elements to make iron ore turn into steel. The same steel that you form from heat allowed to solidify and get cold is the same steel that General Motors, Chrysler, Audi, BMW will stand together, put their emblem on, and drive somebody out of their mind. They'll fall in love with that car. Why? Because see, there's a kindred. Because we're made from the dust earth. The same ground that makes a tree grow, that the lumber yard cuts down, planes down, makes paper, Puts ink on it, 1, 5, 10, 20, 50, and 100. We were brought out of that same place. And our bodies will lust after that. We're family.
because it comes from the earth. So we have to be very careful on how we present ourselves and what's presented to us. We got to fight it through the Spirit of God, through prayer, through fasting, through reading the Bible, coming to church and saying, for God I live, and for God I die. The world is sanctified unto me, and I'm sanctified unto it. It's crucified unto me, and I'm crucified unto it. I have made up my mind, I'm going to serve the Lord. Amen. That's how we fight. Amen. Somebody give God some prayer. Yeah. <laughs> now, we're getting, ready to, we're getting ready to go. I thank God for the day. Look here. Take the first step today. And be honest with yourself. And be honest with God. I don't have nothing to do with it. But you've heard the truth. Those that know that there still needs to be some sanctification. All right, get it now. Get it while it's here. Get it. In the spirit, soul, and body. Why don't you stand when we have a prayer? And it's not, and it ain't praying on you. But stand, stand. If you still got to have some things that need to be sanctified. Because, see, there's one thing I fear of God. To catch Gerald Dow being Gerald Dow. See that move? That means I moved out of being son. I went back to being flesh. I don't want God to catch me there. Because I fear God in this way. If I start coming up <coughs> or doing wrong, what if Jesus come and I'm right in the middle of just Acting a fool. I'm scared. I'm scared of that. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? I am scared of that. And that right there, I don't want the first thing Jesus sees of me to be the last thing I'm cutting up doing. So that means while we have a chance to get right and stay right and learn to be right, that's why I'm asking you to stand and ask God to help you out. Because at any given time, any situation, we can slip. We can slip. There's nothing to play with. I don't care if you've been saved one week or a thousand weeks. The right thing poke you. You can slip. And there's nothing in the Bible that says that while you slip, Jesus still going to just let you go. I, I, I don't read the Bible like that. I read it like this. When he comes, he that's filthy going to be filthy still. You know, you can be saved and slip into filthy. That's called a hypocrite. That's called playing, playing again. I, I fear. You may have some great theologians out there that can explain it away. It's not going to work for me. You can't explain that away. Either I'm going to be hot or I'm going to be cold. Because lukewarm, he said, I'm going to spill you out. I don't need no theologian to look up all this scripture tell me that, oh, you can slip once in a while. Don't worry about it. He's going to forgive you. We don't even let our natural kids do that. How's our spiritual father who's holy going to let us do that? Now, ain't nothing to play with. So that's what I'm saying. If you're still today, I thank God for your honesty. And God is looking at your heart. And you're saying, I'm saved. But I want to and I have to do better. Because I don't want to miss heaven. I honor you today. For being honest with that. Now, what are you standing for? When it presents itself again, do better. Do better. If you ain't got that all together, do better. Show God that I am growing in grace. I'm growing in knowledge now, Lord. Please have mercy on this. If you don't fall off today, and you find yourself still, still fighting, fight back. Father, in the name of Jesus. As we stand and as we sit, you've already showed us and proclaimed to us that we all at any time can lose what we've gained. We don't want to do that, Lord. So help us as you pray for the disciples from the evil, dear Lord. That the evil temptation doesn't pull us away for that one second that you may come back in the twinkling of an eye. Lord, we want to put our souls out there like that. So we pray that you put a hedge of protection around us. That you give us knowledge of what can make us weak, dear God. And strengthen us there, Lord. Allow our spiritual eyes to be open, dear God. In the name of Jesus, open up our spiritual eyes, Lord. That our souls may not be lost. Now, Lord, we pray for those that's here today. Stand. There's
sing in humility, Lord, I'm saved, but I still have to grow. There's still some temptations that sometimes they overtake me and sometimes I win. And we and they are praying in agreement today in the church, dear God, that you would strengthen that weakness that it will be a strength to have me follow. And if the devil has a stronghold with two hands of grip on that person, on that child of yours, dear God, loose his fingers off of him right now. In the name of Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, we have wisdom to know that there are some habits that's being prayed for right now that have been in those minds, spirits, souls, and bodies for double-figure years. But dear God, one day with you can cancel out all those years of addiction, affliction, setback, hurt, or pain, rejection, or unforgiveness, dear God. One day with you. And one prayer with you, dear God, can cancel out all that the devil has provided and presented. So today, today, Lord, take over. We give it to you today, Father. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. And then, Lord, take our sticky fingers away that we don't pick it back up. Once we drop it, it's done. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank God for your time. All right, you have your seat in Saints Square. And with that, brothers and sisters, I made a promise from the Holy Ghost that He wouldn't hold us long this week. It was just 12 30. And yeah, and we're going to be moving on. Just want to preach on sanctification. We're, I'm done preaching. We're going to have our offering. And brothers and sisters, if you ever, if you ever need any conversation,